Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Clive Myrie in the news this week. In Liverpool, as the government prepares to unveil the successor to the Royal Yacht Britannia, a civil servant gently whispers to the cameraman, it's the one on the left. At a branch of Ikea, a member of staff is taking longer than usual to find the brackets for the Billy bookcase. <laughs> <laughs> and in a Swansea primary school, after failing to land a part in a 2020 nativity play this year, Rex makes it to the dress rehearsal before he's finally rumbled. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a writer for the Sunday Times who says she's unable to lie. Neither can I. So, on the team with the man with the terrible tie, please welcome <laughs> Camilla Long. <laughs> on Paul's team tonight is an actor and comedian who once appeared on stage as David Tomlinson, the actor who played Mr Banks in Mary Poppins. Sadly, his wife couldn't attend the premiere as they couldn't find a nanny. <laughs> Please welcome Miles Jupp. <laughs> now we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Camilla. Have a look at this. Oh, it's the three wise men. Well, the <laughs> two. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a new variant virus. Let it snow. Let it <laughs> Ah, small prick. Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's the new Christmas decorations. We're all encouraged to hang one up just in case we go under the mistletoe. Yeah, well, don't do that because you're not allowed to snog under the mistletoe anymore. No, no snogging? Yeah, hold back. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, just before I came out, I saw that the Sag has reversed this and said you can snog cautiously under the mistletoe. <laughs> like, which I think sums up the whole thing, really. But you're, you're, not, you're not allowed to be kissed under the baubles, apparently. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> we've got this new variant and we've got to wait and find out yeah. what happens. Yeah, you're right, absolutely, Ian. Yes, it's the coronavirus part five, the comeback Omicron. <laughs> Is that how you say it? Yeah. Well, the BBC pronunciation unit says it's Omicron. Mary Beard, classic scholar, of course, says it should be Omicron. That's Mary Beard. <laughs> <laughs> Some slightly stupid people, apparently, on the internet are saying that there's a... There's hidden... slightly stupid people on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some slightly stupid people on the internet are saying that there's a hidden code in the name. What's that, do you think? It's an anagram of moronic. <laughs> <laughs> Close. They say Omicron B is an anagram of no crimbo. <laughs> But it's but... not called Omicron B. They've put the B in mm. to make the anagram work. Yeah. Exactly. It would work if there was a B in Omicron, but there isn't, as Gino de Campo, famous classic scholar, says. <laughs> if my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. <laughs> Gino de Campo said the thing about his grandmother, or he said the thing about classics. I got. He okay. said the thing about his grandmother. Oh, I see. Which is. Uh... Well, it's not relevant, is it? But it's... Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a joke, Miles. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not my sort of thing, Clive. No. <laughs> like you, I'm all about reading stuff off cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. The Who have decided to name variants after the ancient Greek alphabet. Yeah. They avoided calling the variants Chi, cos that would suggest that they all came from China. <laughs> I, I'm just saying... <laughs> the whole point of this was so that we didn't say, look, this is the, the Kent variant. So people in Kent, like myself, would think, well, thanks a lot. Are you sure people were calling you the Kent variant, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit spiky tonight, aren't you, Miles? I'm telling you what's yeah. wrong. Are you going to have a go at next? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm as appalled as anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, isn't it great to have the old gang back together again? <laughs> the ghosts of Christmas past. <laughs>
The new rules on coronavirus include face masks, being back on public transport and in shops. Who's not very happy about the return of masks? Some people have got very cross saying that asking you to wear a mask occasionally on public transport in a shop is more or less the equivalent of a fascist dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> and Britain literally has gone overnight from a nice, pleasant liberal place <laughs> to, essentially, it's the gulag. <laughs> So, who thinks mask wearing is not only anti-freedom, but pointless? Piers Corbyn. Yeah, it was yeah. Piers Corbyn. And he made up this catchy tune to sing on the underground while ripping off wear a mask stickers on a tube train. Do you know, wearing a mask is like trying to keep a fart in your trousers. Wearing a mask is like trying to keep a fart in your trousers. Wearing a mask is like trying to keep a part in your trousers. Wearing a mask is like trying to keep a part in your trousers. Wearing a mask is like trying to keep a part in your trousers. There's a point where that video seemed to turn into a film called Zombie Uproar. <laughs> I think wearing a mask is easier than trying to keep a fart in your trousers. <laughs> well, why wouldn't you want to keep a fart in your own trousers? That's their idea of freedom. Okay. Is <laughs> just let the fart out into your face. <laughs> it's, it's what they fought for. It is. <laughs> Who has reassured the nation that it's all gonna be okay? I can't think of a single person who's reassured the nation. Ah, well, someone was confident enough to make this declaration in the Mail on Sunday. People stop me in the street and ask, will we be OK? My answer is a resounding yes. But oh, Matt Hancock. Guess? It is Matt Hancock. Well done, Ian. Can I just point out that I work for the BBC and I'm completely balanced and my opinion of Matt Hancock is unchanged. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, around which seasonal activity are mixed messages? Circular? Christmas parties. Yes. Yes, yes. Christmas parties. Yes, Ooh, one government yes. scientist, that's right, Dr Jenny Harris, is urging us to minimise socialising, whereas Boris Johnson is urging us not to cancel parties, or, as the Daily Star put it, stop all that carrying on right now. There's no reason to call off the canoodling. <laughs> Words that I haven't heard for years, like snogging. I haven't heard snogging yeah, for a long mm -hmm. time, not in public, but canoodling is another one. But on, on the BBC Breakfast, they were worried about snogging, so one of the um, presenters started talking about oral activity. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> You're talking about mixed messages. I thought that you were referring to the fact that we discovered that there'd been loads of parties at Downing Street about a year ago. Yes. And... Mm. when they weren't meant to be having parties. Well, it was around about the time the Track and Trace app had gone so badly wrong, hadn't it? And it, um, I think it, it sort of messed around with various sat -nav things. Anyway, it turned out that number 10 had been flagged up as a dogging hotspot. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, no, you're not normally like this. <laughs> you have not been out of the house much. <laughs> what has The Sun discovered about what's in store for office partygoers this Christmas? Many firms are curtailing certain activities. Oh, yes, and, and no photocopying your bottom. <laughs> That's every year, though. That's we have every what year. sort so of country have we become where you can't find it off? We're going I, to hell here. We're going we to hell. Is that what the Honestly. private eye Christmas party's like, Ian? Just continue. <laughs> <laughs> they do a brass rubbing of each other's bottoms at <laughs> <of> private eye. <laughs> There's an allegation that the government didn't cancel many parties last year, and this is what you mentioned, Camilla, even in the middle of lockdown. So, just explain the story again. I think in, even in, in November, when everybody was in uh, full lockdown, I think they were still having leaving parties and um, sort of, I don't know, sleepovers and, you know, <laughs> pyjama parties and Secret Santa and, you know, Twister and, and stuff like that. At Downing Street, it was basically a massive orgy. <laughs> and we were all sitting at home... Looking through the window. ..crying. <laughs> Why can't they do the decent thing during the lockdown and drive to Barnard Castle? <laughs> <laughs> Which traditional event is the government trying to save? It's a school nativity play. Oh. Yes, yeah, some schools are going ahead with the play but are asking parents not to attend. <laughs> 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 
Well, Boris Johnson did the annual switch on of the Downing Street Christmas lights. How did that go? Very well. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look. Are you very excited about Christmas? Yeah! Do you think this Christmas is going to be considerably better than last Christmas? Yeah! OK, are you ready? Really? Let's count down from five. That's the electricity supply this winter. <laughs> this is the Omicron variant, which, just like last year, could threaten families' plans to meet up over the festive period. Boris Johnson was criticised after 50 people attended a boozy Christmas party at Downing Street during last year's lockdown. Keir Starmer is in the clear, as he also threw a party, but no-one turned up. <laughs> <laughs> The annual Trafalgar Square Christmas tree has been widely mocked for its threadbare appearance. Oh. Yeah, it's normally donated by Norway, but this year it appears to have been donated by Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, might be, it might be threadbare, but it's an impressive fairy on the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, Paul and Miles. Oh, yes. Take a look at this. This is a severe storm which affected a lot of people, mainly in the north, Scotland as well. Some mime uh, artists, they were, they were struggling as a result. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was a pub, as it says there, Britain's <laughs> highest pub. Uh, had Britain's highest drinkers for four days because they were, <laughs> there was a lock-in and so they stayed for about four days and they had a good time, apparently. After going to see an Oasis tribute band at the Tan Hill Inn in the Yorkshire Dales on Friday night, dozens of guests got trapped in the pub for three days by the heavy snow. All they needed was a bit of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of sunshine to clear the paths. Some people tune in thinking that this is the news. <laughs> <laughs> During their three-day and four stay in the Yorkshire pub, some customers spent as much as five pounds at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Clyde, but they got out. They've been rescued, yes. There yes. was a tribute ambulance service going past. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any incidents at the pub? Well, presumably, the brothers who lead Noasis fell out eventually. <laughs> <laughs> whole thing kicked off. Pool yeah. table got turned over. Yeah. One of them started snorting snow. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would we do if there was a blizzard and we were all stuck inside the studio for three days? What do you think? I suspect you'd do a Liam Gallagher impression. Sunshine! <laughs> <laughs> that was Oasis! <laughs> you were doing Reginald Maudlin. <laughs> I think for balance you should do some blur impressions as well. <laughs> <laughs> what televisual casualties of the storm were there? Oh, Ant and Dec's uh, glorious programme, I'm a Celebrity, Give Me Some Money. <laughs> <laughs> what damage occurred on the set? Richard Maidley. He was blown inside out, wasn't he? <laughs> he was taken to hospital with dehydration or something like that, and he said, I woke up, you know, talking nonsense and babbling, and I'm like, what change is that? <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? According to the Mirror, Storm Arwen caused over £1 million worth of damage to the I'm a Celebrity set. Just imagine the damage a storm could do to this set. It yeah. could run into tens of pounds. <laughs> From one storm to another, what controversy did Keir Starmer create this week? He had a reshuffle, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, and who did this come as a surprise to? Angela Rayner, the deputy. Yeah, she was informed of it an hour before she was due to make a speech on Tory Slees. Is that a radio station? <laughs> <laughs> on Tory Slees. Tory Slees. Tune in to Tory Slees. <laughs> 24 hours a day. <laughs> it's the home of sleazy listening. <laughs> Very much. Nice. Lovely. Lovely. What was the main reason given for the reshuffle? To annoy and <laughs> <the> rape. <laughs> <laughs> so why was Keir Starmer branded idiotic, pathetic and childish this week? 
What, for, for putting lots of sensible people yeah. back in the shadow <laughs> cabinet? Well, really according annoying. to the I, the leader's office issued a save the date notice for a Christmas drinks party jointly hosted by Sakir and his shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves, but not his deputy, Angela Rayner. Oh, it's very bitchy, isn't it? It is. It's like um, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> 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 Which one's the Vivian? Who's Vivian, Clive? You've never seen RuPaul's Drag Race. Ian refuses to watch it after he was eliminated in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> he won't have anything to do with it. <laughs> if it does all go pear-shaped for Kia, how might he be able to fill the hours after he's gone? Some hobby that's been uh, revealed? Well, it's by taking a leaf out of Alan Johnson's book and appearing on Steph's packed lunch. <laughs> right, we better go before we see Alan Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he used to be somebody in the government? <laughs> <laughs> He's one of, like, three of the great officers of state, isn't he? No, he was in the government, wasn't he? was he? the Chancellor at yeah, one he point, was, wasn't he? Yeah. I think he was big. They'll <laughs> 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 have a hard job selling that chair after yeah. this. <laughs> I saw Alan the other week. He seemed perfectly normal. I met him at a literary <laughs> festival. And he... Oh, no, he was naked, actually. <laughs> this is the sudden winter storm which caught residents unprepared and the sudden Labour reshuffle which did the same to Angela Rayner. The Labour reshuffle saw the much-heralded return of Yvette Cooper, according to The Times. At the Shadow Cabinet meeting <laughs> that followed, Cooper led a session on how Labour can develop a positive message. That's Yvette Cooper, minister during Gordon Brown's demise, a key face in Ed Miliband's failed bid for power and loser in a leadership election against Jeremy Corbyn. Yes, Labour are back. <laughs> <laughs> and so, to round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers on the buzzers, teams. I think this must be the case against the Mail on Sunday, yeah. which the Duchess of Sussex has won the, the latest round in many, many rounds. And they found in her favour, saying that the paper had been wrong to print half of a letter she'd sent to her father. Bang on. And she was also accused of wearing an aromatic candle. <laughs> it's wearing from the Archie Well. <laughs> it helps if you look at the picture, Clive. Oh, right. <laughs> Otherwise, it might sound a bit stupid. I was looking at him like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Camilla, you're absolutely right. The three judges, including Lord Justice Bean, ruled in favour of <laughs> Meghan. <laughs> and said that the contents of the letter were personal, private and not matters of legitimate public interest. Sticking with the royals, what has the Queen banned the rest of her family from playing this Christmas? Oh... I think it was Monopoly, wasn't it? Yes, Camilla, Monopoly. According to the Mirror, the board game is off the cards because it gets too vicious and causes arguments. Bit of a scrabble for the get out of jail free card. For <laughs> <one>. <laughs> okay, what did the Queen lose this week? Barbados. Yes. 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 yes, yes, she lost Barbados. Prince Charles was sent to oversee the severing of the nation's ties with the monarchy. Here he is doing his bit. He's just within reach of taking over from his mother, and there's nothing to take over. <laughs> I just... Why would you turn up to a ceremony where somebody's basically telling you to fuck off? <laughs> it's oh. just, just old-fashioned British good it's manners. Just, yes. <laughs> turn up. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Charles was guest of honour at the ceremony marking the transition, but who was he upstage by? They wheeled out real royalty, i.e. Rihanna, who is obviously the most yep. fo famous Barbadian in the world. Indeed, yes. The pop star Rihanna, who was greeted with rapturous applause, far louder than anything that had greeted Prince Charles. Not only a pop star, Rihanna also has her own clothing range, but why have her pyjamas caused a bit of a stir recently? Yeah, Ian, why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, they seem very comfortable to me. <laughs> well, well... well <laughs> It, yes, I think... <laughs> Here they are, from the front, looking pretty formal, whilst at the back she seems to have run out of a bit of fabric. 
<laughs> Try keeping a fart in those trousers. <laughs> Yes, this is Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, who has won her legal battle against the Mail on Sunday. The ruling means that Meghan will once again be free to continue to invade her own privacy. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Lucian Freud, Matt Doran, an employee at Swale Council, and snooker player Mark Williams. Uh, uh, no, you have to press that. That's the one that makes the noise. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt Doran was the journalist who went to interview Adele and he flew from Australia to interview her over here but during the interview it transpired that he hadn't listened to her new album and uh, he wasn't allowed to use the interview. Mark Williams... He fell asleep recently during a snooker match. He was the one sitting in the chair, not the one at... He didn't... <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but he, yeah, and he, and he admitted, yeah, I did fall asleep, I've got long Covid... I've basically got sort of snooker-induced narcolepsy now. <laughs> <laughs> the symptom, everyone has long COVID gets that, but only snooker players notice it, yeah. of course. It's, <laughs> people think they're asymptomatic, but they're just not playing enough snooker. <laughs> <laughs> so he admitted, didn't he, that he'd, yeah. he'd fallen as, asleep. He'd and he admitted it. Mark Doran made the mistake. She said, which track do you like most on my album? And he, he could have just made it up, said... Oh, the one where you go, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's a wonder she's so successful. <laughs> I reckon the odd one out is Lucian Freud. The others have admitted to things. He there was recently did lots of nude portraits and there was one he said, that is not me. He said, that's not me. And other people said, no, that's definitely a self-portrait. Yeah. Where, so he denied something, yep. where the others admitted something. Someone from Swaleborough Council has presumably admitted something. That they work with the Swaleborough Council? That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. have no further ambitions. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. You've got it. They've all embarrassed themselves at work, apart from Lucian Freud, who embarrassed himself with his work. Because a painting of a standing male nude was reported to be a self-portrait of his, but Freud repeatedly denied being the artist. Mm. I like that. Could do with some pajamas on him. But... <laughs> Experts have now authenticated the painting, and it's one of Freud's. And it's believed he might have denied painting it because he found it embarrassing. The controversial artist is rumored to have fathered forty children, although only fourteen have been officially identified as his. And here he is at work. <laughs> World champion snooker player Mark Williams fell asleep in his chair. Where have the tops of his fingers gone? <laughs> <laughs> Mark Williams hasn't always been quite so boring. How did he spice up a press conference in 2018 after winning the World Championships? It was something about dancing naked or something. He did the conference in the nude. <laughs> so why should we be grateful he didn't win in 2019, then? Because they didn't have a table. <laughs> <laughs> He was standing up and using the table as a rest. <laughs> the Australian TV host Matt Doran embarrassed himself at work recently. Since the incident, right. Matt has issued a blubbering apology. And as a result, he's now favourite to be the next Australian cricket captain. <laughs> <laughs> A junior employee at Swale Council in Kent accidentally sent out five planning rejections and approvals recently, along with some sarcastic explanations oh. as to why they had made <laughs> that decision. Oh, that's good. Transparency in local <laughs> government. <laughs> the junior employee thought they were resolving a software issue by answering dummy applications, but they were accidentally published, making them legally binding. <laughs> One of the applications that was accidentally rejected was for the charity The Happy Pants Ranch. <laughs> the employee rejected the proposal with the reasoning, your proposal is whack. <laughs> Followed by a second reason stating, no, mate, proper whack. <laughs> Father Christmas also made an embarrassing mistake whilst giving an interview on Radio York. You enjoyed coming to all of these places. I'm sure that you don't get to visit places like Rydell very often. Oh, I live in Ryde. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I live in uh, wherever Santa Claus lives. Yes, we come to Rydell every year.
Time now for the missing words round. And we start with, scientists have developed what to work out if your cat is what? Is it a test to work out if your cat is Schrodinger's? <laughs> <laughs> scientists have developed a reincarnation meter to work out if your cat is Mussolini in a previous life. <laughs> Pussolini. <laughs> Scientists have developed a questionnaire to work out if your cat is a <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> Next. Teddy bear spotted in Susanna Reed's what? Uh, it's one of those things. Hair, uh, bedroom, wallpaper, no. esophagus. I saw them. <laughs> <laughs> it's woods. Dreams. Woods? Woods. What? The, the teddy bear was spotted oh. in Susanna Reed's woods, which was a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy bear spotted in Susanna Reed's knee. Oh. Viewers of GMB claim to have spotted an image of a teddy bear in Susanna Reed's knee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. To be fair to Susanna, her knee only looks like that after repeatedly kneeing Piers Morgan in the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Why, has he got teddy bear shaped bollocks? <laughs> So the final scores are Ian and Camilla have three points. Oh, Paul really? and Miles have five oh, points. That's no. the but before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. What actually is it? I think it is a pepper pot, or he's very pleased to see. <laughs> Did you get this on Grinder? <laughs> 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 Next. <laughs> ah, Robin, now I know why they call you the Boy Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> on which note we say thank you to our panellists. What, on the note of Robin giving Batman a blowjob? <laughs> <laughs> and you were having a go at Miles earlier. <laughs> it's the end of the show, I built up to it, I didn't start there. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm a reformed character. Yeah, he's yeah. a reformed character. <laughs> <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Camilla Long, Paul Merton and Miles Jupp. And I leave you with news that, after realising that the Vatican would benefit from selling toys at Christmas, the Pope reveals the design of the Catholic Church's official version of Operation. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the same hat as Meghan Markle. <laughs> At the launch of the band's new single, there are fears that two years of lockdown have not been kind to the sugar babes. <laughs> <laughs> and in London, one man goes on a spending spree after guessing his mother's pin number. <laughs> Good night. Tis the season to be jolly, and BBC Two are no exception. Join Sandy Tuxvig and co for a QI Christmas special starting right now. And it's music night on BBC Four with two of Fife's finest. Switch over right now for The Proclaimers. This is the story.